the US stock market will start to look like the Hong Kong, Brazil, Japan, Singapore stock market where it goes sideways forever. Chicken Genius Singapore is saying to basically not buy Tesla stock because the whole stock market in the US is going to stay flat forever. I strongly disagree with that. I appreciate his take and I believe Chicken Genius Singapore is the most entertaining financial YouTuber. So let's break this video down. For 18 years, the stock market has been flat. There is one big problem with saying that S&P 500 was flat during this period of 18 years. You see, S&P 500 pays a dividend. Ooh, it does. So let's go to S&P 500 calculator and let's run a few scenarios. First scenario, I think most of you have $100,000 in your account. Let's start from 1996 and end in 2013. And we will add $1,000 every single month as well. And we will end up with 660000 We told we invested $304,000 in total and our analyzed return is 6.5%. You can take inflation out of that. Now, you know, I placed in the top 20 when I went to math Olympics in my home country in Europe. So I am indeed qualified to point out that 6.5% is more than zero. Zero means flat, no change, none. And I hear you saying, oh, but Matt, you're adding $1,000 every single month. What if I just put a lump sum from the beginning? It will be zero, right? Okay. Well, we're putting $100,000 in the very beginning from 1996 to 2013 when supposedly it was flat. And that 100000 comes to $302,000. The analyzed return is actually higher. It's 6.7% instead of 6.5%, which again, I will point out 6.7% is higher than zero and also higher than 6.5%. Now, I wasn't exactly fair how I picked my data, but also Chicken Genius Singapore wasn't entirely uh, fair how he uh, described the flat period of 18 years. You see, the dividend from S&P 500 is very low. It basically just offsets inflation for the most part. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it does, sometimes it pays a little bit more. The more accurate way to do it for how long the market was flat was you go from 1996 to about 2009. As you can see, that is not uh, 18 years. Or you can pick from 2000 until roughly 2012-ish. And also you will see this is a lot less than 18 years. And how will your return look like during this bad period? So 2000 to 2012, we start with $1,000, the dollar cost average, which is the best practice like always. And we end up with almost 5% return. Still not bad. I mean, clearly it is not flat. If you do a, a lump sum, basically at the worst possible time, then during this period, uh, you will basically just match inflation. This is why you want to dollar cost average. Also from 1995 until 2000, S&P 500 more than tripled in just five years. That is ridiculous. So you can easily also make an argument that it's not so much that the stock market, S&P 500 in the US, just stayed flat. It's also that it went way too high, way too quickly in a very short period of time. And then it just got stuck in there because it grew way too fast before. And it took some time to go f through that. When I use a log logarithmic scale, which changes how everything is displayed, it, it gives you a much more accurate picture of what actually happened. And you can see that 
S&P 500 really got ahead of itself starting from here to about here. And when you look generally, you could almost put a straight line like that. The growth just continues to be normal. It's just for a short period of time, it got ahead of itself. <laughs> it wasn't flat. This is a dot-com bubble and this is the housing bubble. But since you know, 2008, something has changed that caused this move. But then again, when you put this on a logarithmic chart, you don't really see much of a change. This is without dividends reinvested and also without inflation. Those two sort of offset each other, although not perfectly. But you can see the trend much better and clearer this way. There is price and there's value. Price is what you pay and value is what you get. Value has clearly not caught up with price. While many stocks indeed will be overpriced, especially as interest rates go up, many of them will keep going down. But Tesla, I believe personally, is in a great situation because earnings per share keep increasing. So even if the whole market goes down and assuming that Tesla's earnings per share keep increasing a lot, at some point, the stock price will have to, I believe, uh, stop dropping. And then it will keep going up, in my personal opinion, not financial advice, to catch up with earnings per share eventually. If the interest rates are going to be high, of course, the PE multiple is not going to be as high. But still, this cannot continue forever, where the earnings keep increasing and the stock price is going down. Look at S&P 500 earnings. In the year 2000, it was close to 100, and they doubled by the year 2020, roughly. And during the same period, the price of S&P 500 uh, more than doubled. It roughly tripled at one point. So in the span of two years, earnings here doubled, while the stock is now lower than it was two years ago. So not investing in Tesla stock specifically because the whole market is not going to do well. I don't see that as a good idea for me because Tesla stock, I believe, will have tremendous earnings and earnings eventually push the stock price up or down. Good earnings up and bad earnings down. I certainly do not expect S&P 500 to 10x its earnings in the next 10 years. I mean, looking at history here, if we just double earnings in 10 years, that's pretty good. <laughs> For Tesla, we doubled really fast. This is all in just two years. And I personally believe that we can keep doing this over and over and over and over again. So not investing in Tesla stock because the market is going to have a bad time for 10 or 20 years doesn't matter. Tesla stock is very different from all other stocks. So if QE doesn't start again, which I'm pretty sure it won't because of the Fed mandate, unless something cracks, the US stock market will start to look like the Hong Kong, Brazil, Japan, Singapore stock market where it goes sideways forever. I'm not interested to fight the Fed. And until they start printing again, I choose to spend my time to learn, pick up a new skill. You go to the gym, go for more dates, whatever. When you look at the logarithmic chart, still I am not so convinced that this is going to be the end. If I was not investing all of my stock portfolio into Tesla stock, I would be investing in S&P 500. Because even through supposedly flat market, I still end up making money. And to make it more realistic, if you just add five years before the market was flat and five years after, uh, it supposedly stopped being flat. And we start with $100,000 and we invest $1,000 every single month and we reinvest all of the dividends. Uh, we end up with 
two million dollars, eight point three seven five percent return. Not too bad. And if we make it thirty years, which is a I think how long most people spend saving for retirement, if they are conscious that they need to save for retirement, then we end up with three and a half million and close to 10% per year return rate. Of course, you have to take inflation out of it, but wouldn't you be happy with three and a half million? It's still millions of dollars. I mean, check this chart out. That return is certainly better than that of an average investor, 2.9% during this period of time. I mean, that barely beats inflation. I personally much rather prefer the Warren Buffett approach. He uh, returned about 20% per year. That's a lot. He just picks stocks that he thinks he's paying less for them than what they are worth at that time. He doesn't try to time the market. He doesn't trade based on what the Fed is doing or anything like that. And he does well. I mean, 99% of actively managed U.S. equity funds underperform. So why try to time the market? I see a good deal and I buy. If a stock drops down even further and earnings stay where we are, then the deal only gets better. These are 48 reasons why I only own Tesla stock in my stock portfolio. My name is Matt Postius. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And I will see you in the next video.